Hi, my name is Joy Hercardillo, and I'm a legal writing professor at the University of Arizona, James E. Rogers College of Law. And today I want to share with you how we took um, what was a tradition at our law school to end the semester, the fall semester, for our 1L students with uh, an escape room competition. And we had to um, make that happen virtually this year. And uh, it was it turned out much better than I think we even anticipated. And um, we really learned some um, important lessons along the way that I'd like to share. So let me share my screen with you. So as I said, um, our tradition had been um, to have this escape room and we'd actually only done it for two years now, um, but we were very attached to it. It was just um, a very upbeat way to end the fall semester for our 1Ls. And what we had done is had all of the 1L students come through the escape room in teams of four to six students, and every team had an hour to escape the room. And then whoever did it in the least amount of time was the champion. So um, we would stage it in our appellate courtroom. Uh, the, the students would come into the courtroom and get their instructions and then fan out and we would run this uh, escape room over several days. Uh, we would have the writing fellows in the room with the students so that they would ensure that the students had to solve all of the clues. Once the team had escaped, we would take them out into the library or the lobby and have them, we'd give them placards that they could pose and we'd take their pictures. When we realized we weren't going to be able to do it because of COVID, we were disappointed, but we really were committed to trying to find a way to replicate this experience. So at the beginning of the lockdown, I saw some articles about some commercial escape rooms that were figuring out how to make their experience virtual. So I kind of just figured, we'll put this on the calendar. We'll figure out how we're going to do it later because we always ran it at the very end of the semester when the students were ready to leave for Thanksgiving. So um, my director, uh, Susie Salman, was 100% behind it. And I just basically figured, okay, you know, I've got to come through somehow and figure out how we're going to do this. So uh, where do you start? I, as I mentioned, I found these articles, but then when I looked into the commercial escape rooms, they had really more professional websites than we were prepared to tackle. What I found most helpful was on YouTube, there were several elementary school teachers that shared techniques, that ways that they had created um, essentially escape rooms. They used uh, Google Slides and they also used uh, Google Sites, which was a Google tool I wasn't even familiar with. But these two videos that I've got here were probably the most helpful for me. The first one taught me how to uh, basically create a Google slide and then populate it with things that, uh, that the students could click on that would um, sometimes take you outside the Google slide or take you to another Google slide. Um, and then uh, the second one uh, kind of expanded upon that and showed how you could embed the Google Slides into a Google site and just basically build the whole escape room on a single site. Before I could really create the Google site, there were certain things that, you know, certain steps you have to take. One of the first things that we would do is create the backstory. Now, in the past, we've kind of had the writing fellows that were responsible for staging and organizing and creating the escape room. And they would come up with a backstory, an explanation for why these people were stuck inside an escape room. Because of the time constraints and just the fact that I wasn't even sure how, how we could even pull this off, I went ahead and created the backstory. Um, but I did continue to have the writing fellows create clues. And then you need to develop the flow of the rooms. You want your clues to kind of um, lead into one another, especially here where we're going to have all of the students uh, complete all of the clues. We had to create a virtual site. Um, we had to figure out, well, what were we going to use for locks? In the past, I had this collection of combination locks and a locking safe. And uh, for this, we used 
Google Forms. One thing that was really different too is that scheduling for the uh, virtual escape room was so much easier because multiple teams could go in um, at the same time. You didn't need to stagger the team. And then another fun um, benefit, and this was the idea of, of one of my writing fellows, was that we could um, bring other uh, faculty into the project by asking them to record some videos and kind of incorporating those videos into the clues. So uh, this is my Google site and I've got it here live. Let me bring it on over. So when I log on to it, um, because this site belongs to me, this is what I see. And this is what the students see. Um, and uh, so here's the backstory for them. And then here's the courtroom. The first courtroom is a hearing on a defendant's motion to exclude. And uh, this started, um, this is a Google slide. And when I first created it, I just put a photograph of an empty courtroom. Um, so I populated it completely. I just searched the internet for um, people and images and things and objects. Sometimes you can find them um, with transparent backgrounds, but other times I just took something, copied and pasted an image and then put it into Word and used the remove background feature um, for the picture edit in Word and then just saved it as a PNG. And that uh, let me just paste it into, into the courtroom. So, uh, so the students are told start here they're also in every courtroom given an easel, which is where they go to unlock the room. But first, they've got to solve clues. So this um, opens up a clue. And from which country did the United States adopt the common law? Go back to the courtroom to solve the clue. So when they go back to the courtroom, they look around and they see, oh, a picture of King George. And um, so they click on that. And this actually takes them to a video, Hamilton video. Sansa, Arya, and their half-brother John decided to go see the Broadway musical Hamilton. As so I won't have you listen to the whole thing, but it's basically a, a scenario that's set up that they're watching Hamilton and they get spit on because uh, the actor that plays King George is notorious for spitting while he sings. So the question is, you know, what law controls this situation? So we give them um, a statute. This is an Arizona statute. Here's a New Jersey statute. Um, and then here's the New York statute, which because this is on Broadway, the students have to figure out jurisdiction, mandatory authority, that kind of thing. They click here and they're told this is the correct answer. And it's correct now to get to find the combination to get out of this courtroom, you will need to get your papers organized. So uh, they can go back to the courtroom and that gives them a clue that this stack of papers is where they wanna go next. That opens up a Google Doc um, th that um, has uh, some text that um, they're supposed to organize in the CREAC paradigm, conclusion, rule, explanation, application, conclusion. Um, but, oh, look, this is completely uh, gibberish. Thing. You're going to need to figure out how to, and when they go to the iPad and click on the iPad, that takes them to a converter website. This is one of the longer clues that we had, but they are able to uh, encrypt or decrypt the text. And of course, then it's just a matter of clicking here and that takes them to, this is the LRAC escape room lock and they need to enter their professor. Those were the post-it notes. I just granted your motion and you've unlocked your first room. Here is where you go to the second room. So uh, the second courtroom, has a it's about place time to you start. got here, counsel. So this is the video. Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. Just give me one moment. Just 
So this was a fun uh, little lecture um, that Andrew Woods gave them. Um, and then it sends them back to the courtroom with the admonition that they'll have to hit the books, which takes them to that clue. Um, and that's a hierarchy of authority clue, which it says um, you will, there will be an obvious mnemonic acronym, which you will no doubt find helpful in the courtroom. Well, um, so once they put them in order, the acronym is phone which takes them to the iPhone, which then takes them to a legal research clue, um, which uh, when they successfully do this, this is at the Socrative website. So it's a quiz. After they complete the quiz and come back to the courtroom, they're told, oh, your case is going to be a while. Good thing you brought work with you, which then brings them to um, this final clue where they have to organize and identify Oops. One, and then the combination for this room. Again, uh, congratulations, judge denied the motion, um, which they were opposing the motion, so that's a good outcome. And uh, now they're into the third courtroom. And this one was uh, fun. I always enjoy a good theme. I don't know if you can hear, there's a snake rattle. They arrive to find that the court is empty and they're told, click on the judge's chair to find out where everyone went. So you see snakes all over the screens. So we had a lot of fun with this, with a basic snake theme. Uh, we took them to some websites where there were trivia games that involved, um, and we incorporated snakes on the plane. Um, but this is also uh, the Chris Griffin um, video where he talks to them. Uh, hey there, this is Professor Griffin coming to you on route back to Tucson on FRCP flight 12B6. So the Blue Book clue um, took them, once, once they solved the Blue Book quiz, then that took them to a trivia site, which then told them to go back to the Professor Griffin video and to figure out um, what the clue to the lock was from the Griffin video. So um, it was rule 45D3. Um, and if they put the wrong rule in, they would get a, a message, try again, or if they put the wrong combination in, try again. So now this is the final room and um, we don't need to spend a ton of time here. Again, this was um, fully populated by oh, me. Um, so it started with a red book quiz that took them to an offsite uh, trivia website. And then ultimately um, they came back and I think the final one was the laptop. And that actually took them and um, this crossword puzzle when it gets solved. Um, gives them the final clue. So here um, is the crossword puzzle almost filled in. So um, they get it right. And then to escape this last courtroom, your combination is we came, we saw, we conquered. So um, back to Admit it. Congratulations, you escaped. Celebrate. And this is quite corny, but they all seem to enjoy it. Get the point. Um, I created some virtual placards uh, to substitute for the real placards that I used to make. And um, here are some screenshots of some successful teams who escaped. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm really happy to answer any questions. If uh, you're inclined to try and tackle something like this, don't hesitate to reach out. I'm, I'll share my materials. I'll uh, walk you through the process. It's um, it may seem more daunting than it is. Uh, it really was a lot of fun. and. Um, Thanks for listening.